Hello there, it's Matmus. Thank you so much for joining me today on this video. I hope you're having a fantastic day. So today we are talking about the age-old argument and debate of what is best. The autoloader versus the manual loader. Now, this isn't really what is best. This is purely a video determined on my opinion and the kind of things that I have found in my military career and the things that I've learned and researched into basically what my take on it all is. Now, before I go ahead and talk too much about it, what I will say is this video isn't specifically focused on a particular kind of vehicle or variant type. It is purely just the principle of having a machine do the work or a human do the work. So first of all, let's start off with a little bit of history. So it's not that the Americans and the British militaries really haven't experimented or deployed autoloaders, they have. The American Striker mobile gun system, MGS, mounts an actual 105mm gun with an autoloader. Many smaller guns, such as the 25mm M242 Bushmaster autocannon, are also equipped with autoloaders. As to primary tank guns, the United States did actually experiment with a Soviet-style autoloader on the M1 Abrams. However, they did it on this. This is the M1 TTB tank testbed. It was a prototype to explore the follow-on variant of the M1 equipped with a remotely operated autoloader equipped turret and a three-man crew who sits in the armored capsule in the forward hull. It never went beyond this prototype though. I don't know where these photos were taken but they are pretty much very good photos. The only photos really I could find of this unique vehicle. Uh, here's another shot looking down the uh, casemate turret showing the carousel autoloader. And here's the rear of the turret showing the case ejector. Very interesting stuff. As to why the US and the British tanks don't equip with an autoloader, the reasons have been pretty much mentioned in the past, but we'll go over them again anyway. So a human loader is obviously going to be a little lighter and faster to load, but that is subjective to everybody's personal opinion on the vehicle that's actually doing the loading. A human loader is able to swap ammunition, which is something autoloaders can't really do in their current designs and requires the chambered rounds actually fired to switch your ammo types. And it's something that others haven't mentioned, but ammunition isolation, guys. Because the ammunition is in the turret with the breech in autoloader designs, unless you have armoured bulkheads between the engine, turret compartment and crew, a hit to the turret destroys the tank, it's simple as that. There's great footage from a 1991 Gulf War uh, of T-72s going up like Roman candles when an M1 round penetrates the hull, hits the ammunition in the autoloader and blew the tank sky high. And since the T-72 didn't have such isolation, the crew was killed instantly. Now that's not saying that all autoloader vehicles nowadays don't have ammunition isolation, but it is something that they need to consider. Modern main battle tanks like the M1 and the Challenger 2 use armoured storage areas accessed through the blast-proof doors to store the ammunition. Loaders open the door to retrieve that ammunition for loading. If a hit penetrates one of these areas, the ammunition explode, explodes, explodes in a channeled upwards way away from the crew and confining department. Lose the ammo, save the tank. Russian designs haven't really done so much in this kind of catastrophic event yet. With an auto loader, you lose the main gun even with compartmentalization. With a tank like the M1, you only lose the impacted ammunition. The tank can still fight. Auto, lo auto loaders represent some trade offs too. I do think it's possible to design a compartmentalized auto loader that might be able to be as fast as human or perhaps change out the ammo as needed, but be likely quite bulky and heavy and probably quite expensive. If you break the auto loader or take a hard hit, you could jam the auto loader, even if the hull or turret isn't penetrated. Keep in mind the Russians went for auto loaders in the T64, 72, 80, 90. Designs are pretty much staying the same, but in keeping their tanks smaller, that's what they've aimed for. The low profile and small internal volume made an auto loader desirable, otherwise a human would be very cramped inside the turret with the commander and the gunner. Their tank design philosophy was simple, but quite different. Crew protection and survivability was not really one of their major driving factors. Interestingly though, the proposed Russian follow-on to the T-90, the Armata, follows the M1 TTB concept with an auto-loaded main gun and an armoured crew capsule within the hull. Some other things you've got to think about guys is an extra crew member is really handy in most conditions. A tank after all is a gigantic collection of moving parts that goes into nasty places looking for a fight. All those moving parts require maintenance, not just the engine and the transmission, but also the crew hatches, the turret, the guns. Most tanks have several guns. The M1A2 Abrams is frequently seen with four weapons. The main gun, 120mm gun, the coaxial 7.62 GPMG, the commander's 50 cal M2, the loader's Pintle M7.62mm uh, GPMG. 
There's loads of other things that you need to take care of. The road wheels, the bearings, the drive sprockets, idle wheels, track tension systems, you know, the suspension system in general, and even the, just the track itself. That's just for starters. So having a fourth set of hands to help out with all that upkeep makes the collection of tasks so much less daunting. Granted, not all of it needs to be serviced every single day, but it does need to be serviced according to how long since the last service was done and how much it really needs. When the tank is rolling around looking for a fight, the loader can also help the commander look around for threats, friendly forces, and the more expressional, situational awareness, and having an extra person can also act as a really good lookout, it helps quite a bit. In combat zones, the loader frequently mans a pimple mounted machine gun. That means in a city where his threats from hostiles on foot are common, he's more useful keeping those threats addressed than he would be servicing the main gun. Also, in between missions or movements or other activities, the crew can't just sit awake at their post 24-7, although we'd really love to because we're so keen about our jobs. We're still human, we need sleep, we need food, and we need to maintain the vehicle, as we said before. Having a fourth person on the crew means that you can rotate the crew on and off, watch for the status a lot more smoothly of each of your men. You can rotate crew members between standing watch, working, vehicle maintenance, refueling, restocking ammunition, other supplies, eating, sleeping, blah 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 blah. In emergencies, and being that it's war, it's very possible for a crew member to be injured, killed, or otherwise put out of action. With a fourth man as a loader, you have extra hands for first aid, or for feel for an injured crewman, crew member if the need arises. Finally, there is some significant downsides to an autoloader system in the tank, from my own personal opinion. Without going into too much detail, there is a lot of things that kind of bug me. For one, it adds another very complex mechanism to the tank. That means you have more items requiring maintenance and upkeep. It's one more system, and if it goes wrong or breaks, it takes the tank out of its combat role. After all, if you can no longer feed the main gun, you're pretty much just driving a machine gun pillbox. For another, it's like a magazine and a rifle. It has to be refilled periodically. This takes pretty much the rest of the crew away from their jobs, and it takes the tank out of action until they're done. There's also the downside that once you've placed rounds in the magazine, you have to either fire them off or retreat and reload the magazine if you want to change ammunition types, say APDS to high explosive or canister to heat, unless you had the foresight to place those rounds in the magazine beforehand, which meant you had to pretty much accept carrying fewer ready to use round ammunition types than you originally intended to use. Whereas a human loader can instantly select the type of ammunition from the entire store of rounds on board the tank. Yes, it's a little bit more complex trying to get access to certain bins within the underside of the hull itself, but it's still accessible and is still selectable from a command basis for whatever you needed at the time. And finally, there's some more downsides that I kind of Again, bug me. The automatic loader system can be a safety hazard. While the tank is jolting around, the auto loader is one hell of a strong mechanical system, picking up things and swinging them around in the turret. If a crewman's arm or something accidentally gets caught and snagged in that system, you're now down two functioning crew members in the tank. However, armies are looking at reducing and pretty much trying to cost reduce the size of their combat vehicles, including the guns. It only makes sense, reduce the size equals reduce materials, reduce manpower. It's both a financial and political thing that they've got going on. Cost less and less manpower required to recruit and train and pay or declare lost in action. Many nations are actually looking for an AFV that can carry troops in battle, engage any armor that's deployable on the field and then continue to survive but with the minimal cost. So beefier versions of say the Bradley and the Warrior armor fine vehicles are currently being developed and trialed. You know, we already know that the Ajax and such and all those new vehicles are starting to come out now. Challenger 2 is Britain's probably last main battle tank, I'd say. Um, I'm hoping it's not, but it's just my personal opinion uh, as what we define as a main battle tank today. I think what's probably going to come next is going to be a lot smaller, probably made of plastic, going to be generic with troop carrying versions. Um, but I don't ever see any of the top five tank producing countries ever going beyond 120 millimeters. Uh, more likely they'll try and downsize relying on better materials and munitions to provide the same or better penetration than we have seen in today's guns. The Americans are working pretty hard on the old railgun system so we'll see if that ever comes <laughs> to fruition. If they ever do get that thing downsized they could fire a 30mm round that could do the exact same as the 120mm rounds do, but drastically more damage. Um, already tanks nowadays have missile systems fitted to them as we already know, ATGMs and it negating the purpose for main guns a lot more nowadays. It could be that someone one day will decide a tank firing multiple missiles is a lot better than traditional gun types, who knows. 
anyway guys um, that's just my tidbits on it I mean the key points I'm trying to get across here is a, an extra crew member is going to give you a lot more in terms of firepower on the ground boots on the ground and let me just put it this way having people on the ground is what wins the wars not the technology the technology only gets you so far it's the actual people utilizing the equipment that gets you to win a battle or whatever may be going on at the time I personally feel that the auto loading system is definitely going to be coming in, in the future. It's something they're going to be aiming for, for sure. I'm not saying that I'm totally against it. What I'm saying is, is I do personally feel that the manual loader is always an asset to have in a main battle tank. But as I already said, I think the main battle tank is coming to a generational end, potentially, with new weapon systems that are coming out nowadays. Again, that's maybe a discussion for another day. and. If you do want me to talk about that, please leave it in the comments below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me hear your comments and opinions on what you think about uh, the auto loader and manual loader debate. I'm really interested to hear. Please try and keep it respectable, guys. Uh, I know some people previously in the past have had some comments on my channel, and it's a little abrupt to one another. At the end of the day, guys, we're only talking about vehicles, and I understand if you're from different nations and countries, we get very passionate about where we're from and the vehicles we utilize. But let's try and keep it respectful and just have a debate and talk about it sensibly. Um, please guys if you did enjoy leave a like and the like button if you are new to my channel please subscribe also for those of you who wish to contribute or donate towards my channel there is a link in the description below uh, for my patreon account that you're more than happy to donate to I would really appreciate and thank you very much for those who have um, and again I hope you all have a fantastic day take care and all the best bye bye